All right, Vinny Goodwill, back with us. Uh, always a great follow on Twitter. Are we bored or something? That's got to be the only reason we're talking about someone besides the Joker being MVP. Some years is hard. This one ain't. Um, Vinny, I don't think, I mean, I don't think that was a shot at me, but I will acknowledge that at one point, <laughs> I was probably overthinking the MVP conversation just because so many of the contenders were dropping like flies. Um, and I felt like, should we kind of recalibrate how we assess MVP in this unusual season, this truncated, taxing season, given that everybody was suffering from injuries, which that's nobody's fault, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, not only has Joker been available, uh, he's been historically brilliant. Um, so at this point, who are you hearing that's trying to give it to somebody else? And what is their rationale for trying to do it? I don't know necessarily if it's like a who. I just feel like it's a they type of thing. It's like somewhere in the Twitterverse, there's this push for Chris Paul, who's a historically great point guard, for them to say, you know, what? Well, Chris Paul got uh, what well, Steve Nash got it for turning around the Suns. And look at the turnaround that the Suns have had this year. And although his numbers aren't great, uh, historically great or even great compared to some of his better seasons, he deserves credit more than the Joker does, as if some way to discredit the way that Nikola, jo Nikola Jokic has been playing this year. Like, I feel like even when Joel Embiid came back, there was this push to say, you know what, him missing those games don't really matter. Like, this is the second straight year that the MVP has been a runaway. And the second straight year, that a lot of folks have tried to make it be something that it's not. Maybe we're bored. Maybe we don't like the advanced stats part of it. I'm not sure. But especially in this age of souped-up numbers with the three-point shot completely skewing everything we view or everything that, we, everything that we've always known to be true, this guy is as sure of an MVP as we've had the last two or three years, even with Giannis. And I don't see how this is as much of a discussion as it's been even before the MB stuff. Remember, that was the James Harden part where people were saying it was James Harden. And I was like, no, no, no. This guy is playing special basketball. You can have a career year, Steph Curry. You can have a career year, Embiid. You can have a career year, all these other guys. And you can have an MVP year and not be the MVP. And we don't have to make this so hard, hard on ourselves. It's not that hard. Okay. So it's a runaway when it comes to him winning the MVP. And, and I think it was running the other way. As soon as Jamal Murray got hurt, they're done as contenders. Do you think? And that seems like seems like that was a bit premature. Do you think the Nuggets are still legitimate Western Conference contenders, championship contenders? If Michael Porter Jr. is now their second best player, he might have he might wind up being a better second best player than Jamal Murray was. And Jamal Murray ripped up the bubble last year and helped them get to the Western Conference Finals. It all depends on how the bracket breaks out. If they wind up playing the Lakers in the first round and the Lakers are healthy and everything else, all right, cool. Yeah, you're not going to get me to bet on them. But any other matchup, and I mean any other matchup, you got, you'll have a hard time convincing me, even with the Clippers, because they just beat the Clippers last week. You will have a hard time convincing me that they are not a better team. And then to come in a second round where they could play the Jazz or they could play Phoenix, what team would you actually be picking considering the Nuggets went to the Western Conference Finals last year and their second best player might be better than any other team they're facing's second best player? So, most valuable player, slam dunk. Rookie of the year, not so much. So, Anthony Edwards last night, Ant-Man, goes for mm -hmm. 42 on 17 to 22 shooting, 8 and 9 threes, 7 to 6, 6 rebounds. Third teenager joining LeBron and Durant to have a 45 and 5 game. Dude's 19 years old, averaging 19 points. If he were to be Rookie of the Year, he'd be the third Timberwolf, I believe, in the last three years. Oh, let's give the last seven years. I'm sorry. Third Timberwolf in the last seven years. Because back-to-back, -back they had Wiggins and Towns um, to be Rookie of the Year. I, I, sorry if this is a cop-out. Is it co-Rookie of the Year, him and LaMelo Ball? How would you vote for it uh, if you had to do it today? We've seen co-Rookies of the Year before. Uh, we saw Brand and Francis. We saw uh, Kidd and Grant Hill. How would you uh, how would you vote for it if you had to vote today? 
it, it's tough, and we can't split our votes. So if it winds up being a co rookie of the oh. year, it's just going to be because the points match oh, that, up. Oh, that's how that happens. That's how it, it just wound uh -huh. up that though that all of those yeah, points yeah, that gotcha. you know how it goes it just matched mm -hmm. up. It wasn't that we could split our votes, and it's tough right now gotcha. because I saw Lamelo Ball play live the other night, and I am astonished at the passes that he makes. I am impressed by the way that he impacts winning. The same way that we talk about Chris Paul impacting winning. I see guys playing harder, running harder, expecting the ball. And that's something that you can't really quantify for LaMelo Ball. But if we're going to say attendance matters, as in the MVP conversation, which disqualifies Joel Embiid, which kind of disqualifies James Harden, then it has to matter in this case as well, especially in an extreme case where you wind up missing over a month because of a broken hand or a broken wrist. Anthony Edwards has been coming on, and I think the stronger that you play down the stretch, especially with the fact that you're playing on a team that isn't playing for much and you're playing winning type of basketball. Anthony Edwards is playing winning basketball at this stage and playing better defense than he had before on a team that really hasn't prioritized that. You'll find it hard pressed to get someone like me to not reward that. It's just, it's probably going to come down to the last week. I can honestly say that I am undecided at this point. Yeah, and I, I, I think you'll, I think it could end up being COVID, uh rookie of the year because I'm sure a lot of people could see it either way. Uh, another real quick on uh, on A1 from day one. I mean, he said last night that he doesn't want anybody to respect him. He wants them to think of him the same way they thought of him when he got drafted, before he got drafted. Um, when a lot of people, I mean, to watch last night in a loss, and John Morant was brilliant, in a loss to Memphis, to watch what felt like a, a real coming out party. It felt like a star was born. I mean, he's been a star. Remind me mm -hmm. of, you know, Jamie Foxx, uh, you know, Willie Beeman. I was always a star. Y'all just didn't know it. He's a star on and off the court. And he's been brilliant um, in both areas this year. But last night felt like just this announcement. Um, just when you look back at the at the draft, the pre-draft buildup, and the idea that the, the Wolves are making a mistake taking him or that he was unworthy of being number one, like, how do you marry that with what we've seen? Why did so many people outside of Minnesota seemingly miss when it came to the star? Because we, we thought the only star, the only surefire star was LaMelo Ball. And here we are with one and three seeming like home runs. Because we are victims to not having enough information. You got to remember, that was the end of the college regular season usually we start tuning in to college basketball right around the time when the world shut down. And because we didn't get a chance to see Georgia in the tournament, because we didn't get, get, get a chance to really see Anthony Edwards play, we immediately dismissed him as just a guy. Oh, he's a guy that can score. No, he's a guy that can do more than score. Scoring is what get, gets him on the floor. Everything else is what's going to make him a star, in addition to the personality, the impact on winning, everything else. But when we don't know something about a guy and we see LaMelo Ball, who we felt like we've seen grow up to a certain degree and be this kid who's sort of gone through the gamut of the mistakes and then going overseas and everything else, we felt like we knew more. And unfortunately, we didn't know enough on Anthony Edwards and the media as always, winds up falling on their face when we don't have enough information and making grand declarations. And we've come to find out that Anthony Edwards is as real as we didn't know that he could be. And I think when you look from an organizational standpoint, you need to build your Minnesota Timberwolves organization around him, his talents, his wants, and his future. I don't care who else is there, no shade, but he's the guy, and that's the timeline that you need to be following right now. He he seems All like right. a, a a younger. Sorry, what what his observation, Michael? He seems like a. He seems like he's giving him that dog that Jimmy Butler was giving him for a second, but it didn't work out. He's he's got a lot of Jimmy Butler in him, like affable personality, fun and games. But when he's between those lines, it's a different. It's a different story. So that's all I wanted to just. Yeah, that's observe. a great comparison. They, they needed somebody like him for a while. Yeah, you you know, Mike, Rene, just, you yeah, mentioned the media. Yeah, you mentioned the media a minute ago. Speaking of the media, now listen, man. Nice segue. Y'all got to know this. Y'all, y'all got to know this. I hate it when people needlessly lose money. I want everybody. I don't begrudge anybody for getting paper. I want you to keep your paper in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. Do do your thing. I don't want 
Uh, whether it's Uncle Sam or anybody else, I don't want anybody else to take your money needlessly. So when Kyrie Irving is fined $35,000 for not doing his job, essentially. Mm -hmm. it didn't, I mean, like, it, it didn't do his job. It really bothers me, Vinny, uh, because of, I just feel like Kyrie, as I said, I said it this way. I can handle $35,000 better than the NBA can. And I've heard Kyrie speak about what he's passionate about, what's important to him. He talks about underserved communities, and he has done some wonderful things with his own money, including the Breonna Taylor uh, project. He's done some things. So I just I get so frustrated when you have like 30% of the U.S. population making less than $35,000. And somebody who says, I care about underserved communities, I just say, I say, that 35 is wasted, man. Like, you do, don't give them your money, especially for just talking to the media. Help me out here. Like, uh, you have a problem with this or you just say, oh, whatever. If he wants to you burn want 35 grand, go ahead and let him. Wait, you want me to get inside the head of Kyrie Irving and explain why he refused to speak to the media multiple times? Now, keep that in mind. In the NBA's release, it was multiple refusals to speak to the media. Right, this is progressive. Which, <laughs> right, which means that the NBA has given Kyrie, lack of a better phrase, a lot of rope here. Okay, Kyrie don't want to talk once or twice. All right, they'll keep it under their, you know, they'll keep it under their hats. And the media, by and large, especially like, you know, people who are really close to that, they don't want to make a stink. They don't want to email the NBA and say, hey, this guy isn't cooperating. Nobody wants to have an adversarial relationship. But when it gets to the point where respect is not shown, and Kyrie Irving has shown throughout the course of especially this season, a disdain for the process, a disdain for the media, even though when he's actually there, he's been pretty forthcoming. He's been pretty candid. He's been pretty honest. He's gone out and expressed himself in ways that not only, A, has given, quote-unquote, the big bad media what they want, but also expressing his message out there in a clear and coherent way that's given him more positive feedback than negative. Unfortunately, that's going to turn people against you. I don't know why, for whatever reason, Kyrie, who seems like he's been all about the right things in terms of his intentions. Your intentions have always seemed to be in the right place. But if you don't want to be accountable and you refuse to be accountable for your job, then that turns public discourse against you. The playoffs are coming up. You mean to tell me you're not going to speak after a critical game, whether you make or miss a last public, shot, and you're not, account and you're not accountable you're not public discourse, you mean... But by public discourse, Vinny, you mean who? Because, I mean, I, like all of us know that nobody, so we talked about sympathy earlier, nobody has any sympathy for us. Fans, especially in the, in the age of social media, fans ain't sitting around saying, oh, poor reporters, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving won't talk to them. They're probably cheering him on. It's probably endeared him to a large segment of the fans who hate the media, who hate people like us. And, and, and appreciate that he doesn't waste his time talking to us. My biggest thing, Michael, you're talking about the 35000 and how much better could be done with it. Vinny, I just don't think 35000 is a deterrent for Kyrie Irving, who's making God knows what, or the, or the Brooklyn Nets for that matter. If you actually are serious about them being accountable and this being a part of their job, that fine has to be much more su uh, substantial to actually get his attention and make him think twice about skipping these sessions. What's $35,000 to him? I quote Randy Moss, ain't number thirty five grand. Or paraphrase Randy Moss. Well, well I, but, but, I, but, 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 but I think it's a CBA. Way, I yeah. think it's a CBA. You're, and, you're only allowed right. to find a team and a player so no, I, much. No, I know Even that. Even if they want to hit them hard. No, I know that. But, but that's what I'm saying. It's not enough. It's collectively bargained, right. But it's not enough to actually for, uh, offer or itself as a deterrent. Like, what if does Kyrie Irving care about $35,000? Michael, Michael, you care more about the $35,000. And the fact that he's giving his money away for something silly, I get it. Right. But Kyrie Irving well, but see, is but like 35000 or talking to the media when I don't feel like it and I'm going to stand on my principles. Kyrie Irving don't care about $35,000. But, yeah, yeah, because he's thinking about himself. So if you're thinking about, if you're thinking about yeah. you, if you're thinking about you, 
yeah, it doesn't make a big deal. It's not a big deal to you. But what I'm saying is, if if this is important to you, you can't you can't speak the language of being somebody for the a man of the people. You can't have man of the people language and elitist tone deaf actions. But we we had this com- we, we had this conversation problem. before. It's These are mutual, those, those are mutually problem. exclusive. But right. we could do this is mutually exclusive. We had the same conversation before. He can do what he wants to do for the community and for the cause, independent of thirty five thousand dollars check he's writing the NBA. Like it's not like it's precluding him from doing work. Uh, but in what the I'm saying is, but I'm saying, but your actions, your actions say a lot. Look, hey, if you're gonna be about, you gotta be, you gotta be a little more consistent. If you're gonna care wait, about people wait. and say people are, hey, hey, you talk about the art. Hey, we're we're more than basketball players and all that stuff. If you're gonna do that, Michael, I'm telling you, at least at you, the very you're least, you're the minority on this. Hey, are fine. you mean? Know, do I'm you sharing. mean? To, do you mean to tell me that Kyrie Irving is inconsistent, Mister P- Mister PTO himself? <laughs> is that what you are telling no. me? That 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 no. That, what the, I'm saying. What I'm saying is member, that a founding member of Run DMP is inconsistent. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Run DMP. No. What I'm saying is this is very consistent. This is extremely consistent. Kyrie Irving being uh, contrarian. Kyrie Irving yes. going against the grain. Kyrie Irving resisting against, wait for it, the man is very consistent, very on brand, and I'm telling you, very endearing to a lot of fans. A lot of fans don't care that he didn't give his time to us. They never you know, care, you about don't care about that. Whenever, you, Michael, you, you know I this. Don't whenever care about we that complain part. about stuff, when it, but I'm telling you, this is why Kyrie Irving and many others don't see it the way you see it. Like you're saying, hey, you could do something better with $35,000 and just give it to the NBA because you don't want to do what's part of your job. I'm saying Kyrie Irving looks at this as he is being consistent in terms of resisting. Marshawn Lynch did the same thing. It's his own form of protest. I'm not. I'm not going to dance because you tell me to dance. Says Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, t- I'll tell you this, Michael Smith. The Joe fan may not care right now, but if in the second round mm-hmm. of Game Two you miss a critical three at the end of the game to the Milwaukee yeah. Bucks and you don't talk to the media then, yeah. I bet you the fans will be screaming for accountability then. Hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.